guys, it's Charlene. Today I'm gonna to show you two different things you can use with your embossing folders. We're gonna make these gorgeous cards here. This first one you're gonna see, I'm gonna use vellum with my embossing folder. And for the second one, I am going to use acetate. So let's dive right in. For today's cards, I'm gonna be using the Snowflakes 3D embossing folder. This is a beautiful folder. I am a bit of a lover of <laughs> embossing folders. I have a huge number of them, but they are so perfect for making quick and easy cards. So we're gonna start out with a piece of acetate and I have cut this to be four and a quarter inches by eight and a half inches. And then I'm using my scoring board here and I'm gonna score it along the five and a half inch line. And I'm just gonna make sure I have a really nice score there. I run it back and forth a few times and then I'm gonna fold it over. And this will make more sense as we go along, but essentially, we're creating a spot where that front flap of the acetate can go over an A2 sized card. So your rectangle is gonna end up being four and a quarter inches along the bottom and then five and a half inches from top to bottom. So once you have it scored, you're gonna to wanna to use your bone folder or your scoring tool, whatever you have, and just reinforce that score line because that's gonna help this to lay flat and it's also gonna help you to refold that score line once you have run your acetate in your embossing folder through your die cutting machine. So you'll take your piece of acetate, you're going to lay it inside of your embossing folder, just making sure that the entire thing lines up with the image inside of the embossing folder, and then you'll run it through your die cutting machine. I am using the Spellbinders Platinum 6. I'm using the universal plates here, and so what works well for me for this embossing folder is the base, then the embossing folder, and then the adapter D plate. Now you might have a different machine or your machine might have a different kind of pressure to it. So it might take a little bit of playing around to find a nice pressure to put the acetate through with. Once you pull it out of the machine, you can see there all of that beautiful snowflake detail, and you can very easily fold that score line back over. There are a lot of different things you could use underneath your acetate. I've chosen here to use the Winter Wonder Paper Pack because there is this gorgeous piece in here with the tree line in all different shades of blue, but you could use this over any of the sheets and it would look absolutely phenomenal. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting a strip of double-sided tape, very sticky double-sided tape on the back of a piece from that paper pack. I've cut that piece down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I made sure the trees you'll see here in a second are facing the right direction. And then I've removed the release tape from my double-sided tape and I'm able to slide that piece from the paper pack in behind the acetate so that I can then use the flap that we created earlier to hold on to the back of the piece of paper. So now my acetate is not going to go anywhere. It's going to stick right there on the paper. And then I can just come in with a pair of scissors and trim off any excess that I want to trim off off of the back of the piece. Then I can come in with a few more pieces of the double-sided tape and I can adhere the whole thing to my card base, which is an A2 sized card base. I just make sure it's nice and lined up and then I can remove the rest of the release tape here and lay everything flat down so it all lines up really nicely. You also could do this in the corner of your scoring tool or your MISTI to help line things up as you're laying it down. But now you can see there is the embossed acetate on the top with our pretty piece behind it. It's just really gorgeous. Next, I'm gonna come in here with the Let It Snow stamps and dies. These are some really gorgeous, intricate snowflakes and sentiments. And I'm gonna be using my Distress inks to color three of the snowflake stamps. I'm using Stormy Sky, and then I'll be using Faded Jeans, and I will also be using 
prize ribbon. So I'm gonna do three different shades of blue and I'm actually going to stamp my sentiment in black ink. To get some really nice color, I am actually stamping the snowflakes about three times each, just so I can make sure that that blue is really vibrant on the snowflakes. Here I have my sentiment, and there are some really nice sentiments in this set, which is nice. This one says, believe in the magic of Christmas, which I thought was nice with the snowflakes and that acetate and everything. I thought it went together really well. To adhere the snowflakes and my sentiment, I'm actually using liquid adhesive. Now this does take uh, quite a bit longer to dry on the acetate because the acetate is not porous. So what I'm doing is I have a stamping block there and I'm just gonna set it on top while the glue starts to dry. So that way it holds it in place, make sure you get a really nice adhesion. And you could use double-sided tape to adhere everything. You also could put a double-sided adhesive sheet on the back of everything before you die cut it out. I just find that the liquid glue, yes, it takes some time to dry, but then I know it's going to stay on there. It's gonna stick on there really well once it dries. So there isn't a whole lot of rhyme or reason as to the places that I'm picking out here to put the snowflakes. It is just in general a good idea to place things in a triangle formation. It's generally more pleasing to the eye. So you can see I'm gonna put each of the snowflakes on the card front so that way they form a triangle. And then I'm gonna put my sentiment right in the center area that is left. Now this next part is optional. It just depends on whether or not you want that acetate piece moving around on the top of your card. If you don't, you can do what I'm doing here, which is I'm just adding some glue behind the pieces that we glued to the front. That way the glue is all hidden and you can't see it from the front of the card. And so I'll add the glue to the back of all of those pieces and then I can put everything down again and put my acrylic block on top again and it's gonna adhere it all to the paper underneath. That way the front of your card will be seamless and it'll all look really nice together. To make things a little more fancy, I'm bringing in some winter pearl stickers and I'm using some white ones, some light blue ones, and then some dark silver ones and I'm just placing them here and there around the front of the card to add that little bit of elegance along with everything else we have going on. For our second card, we're gonna be working with vellum. So again, I have a sheet that's cut to four and a quarter inches by eight and a half inches, and I'm gonna put it in that same Snowflakes 3D embossing folder, going to run it through my die cutting machine with the base, then the embossing folder, and then that D adapter plate. Something to keep in mind is that vellum does tend to crack when you are running it through an embossing folder. So you might wanna try playing with different weights of vellum, as well as different sandwiches in your particular die cutting machine so that you can reduce any of that cracking. But when it comes out, it does look really beautiful. We're gonna do that same scoring step, but first I wanna cut out some of these lovely layers, large snowflakes. These are really detailed and beautiful. I've cut them out of some glitter paper. And now I'm gonna trim just a little bit off the top and bottom of my vellum piece there because you can see there was a little strip that was towards the top of the embossing folder that didn't emboss. And then I'm just trimming off the top because I know there's gonna be excess there. Now I did my steps a little bit different, but same final outcome here. Here I'm gonna go ahead and put my double-sided adhesive right along the top of an A2 sized card panel. I have this in white cardstock, but you could use pattern paper, you could use solid color cardstock, you could use pretty much anything you want here, but I just wanted to keep things really elegant for this card with just white and silver. So I put my piece of double-sided tape there and then I'm gonna bring in my scoring tool, again, my scoreboard, 
and I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to put the vellum so that the uh, pretty side is face down. Then I'm going to put my piece of cardstock so that it's on top of that. And then I can come in and go ahead and score along the line at the top of that card panel. Then I can remove the release tape from my double-sided adhesive and fold everything over. So I know everything's gonna be nice and straight and lined up. Now you could do this as well with the acetate, but I generally prefer to score the acetate first before I run it through my embossing folder because I find that sometimes it can be a little hard to score and fold it in the right spot once it's already been run through with an embossing folder. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the entire piece to my card base. This is an A2 size card base. Now on both of these cards, I chose to do a top folding card base because that is where I adhered my vellum as well as my acetate. But you could also create a side folding card and just adhere your vellum or your acetate in the same way, but do it on the side. So you'd wanna have a little bit wider piece of acetate or a wider piece of vellum that you were using when you were running it through with your embossing folder. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm doing the same thing here with the triangle formation with my lovely layers large snowflakes and don't those look beautiful in the glitter cardstock you guys? Just so pretty. Like I feel like these should be ornaments hanging on a tree or something. So once I glued all of those down, I could just trim off any excess that's going off of the sides of the card here. And you can see it looks so pretty. For my sentiment, I'm gonna come in here next with the Peace, Love, Joy stamps and dies. These are really pretty and elegant dies for the season. I'm gonna heat emboss these. So I'm starting out with some anti-static powder tool. I'm covering the entire front of an A2 sized card panel here and I'm going to stamp everything using the Honeybee Stamps Be Creative Embossing Ink. I just want to make sure to get a really nice good coating of my embossing ink so that way I don't miss any spots when I'm heat embossing. And then for my embossing powder I'm going to be using the Wow Sterling Silver which is just so pretty when it melts. It's very reflective. It looks like a liquid silver metal. It is beautiful. So I've put my embossing powder down on there. I'm coming in here with my heat gun and I am melting all of that embossing powder. And this is just always the magical part, right? You guys, it's from powder. You get this beautiful, shiny, gorgeous, raised result. And you do want to make sure you are not staying in one spot for too long because you don't want to kind of over melt that embossing powder so that it has the chance to get soaked up into the fibers of your paper. Now I've used the coordinating dies and cut those out and off camera I did cut out two extra die cuts of each of these and glued them all together with the heat embossed piece. That's just going to give them a little bit of dimension on the front of the card because they're going to be raised more. You also could use foam tape or foam squares to get the same result, but I find it's just quicker and easier when you're working with these very detailed sentiments to go ahead and glue a couple extra die cuts on the back. So again, with the liquid adhesive, I know that's a theme here, but I just find that it makes everything stick together and stay uh, more permanent um, rather than using a double-sided tape or something like that. If you do use a double-sided tape, just make sure you're using something that's really sticky like I did for my cards for that flap. So I decided to go ahead and put the sentiments over the tops of the snowflakes. You could also put them in the little areas where the snowflakes aren't, but I thought it would look really pretty to have that repeating triangle with the sentiments in the exact same spot where those snowflakes are. It's kind of emphasizing it. Last but not least, I'm going to bring in some bling and I'm going to use the metallic mix 
pearl stickers. These are really beautiful and shiny silvers and golds. And the shiny silver goes really well with the shiny of that embossing powder. So I've used some of the smaller ones, placed them here and there around on the card so that they are also in triangle formations. And that finishes off the card. Wow, look at all of that beautiful shine, you guys. So going back, let me show you again. Here is that other card we did with the acetate. It just looks so cool and different, and you don't see that a lot with holiday cards. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.